Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Today I'm really happy to be showing you how I created my mission inspiration page for the month of May. For those of you who don't know, Mission Inspiration is a monthly mixed media journal challenge hosted by Mike Deacon and he also has guest hosts and this month's guest host is Ann Williamson and they provide a number of prompts and based on those prompts you create a journal page or project of your choice. They also give uh, word prompts as well as color prompts and yeah I'm really happy to be showing you how I created this page. I had a lot of fun with it. I never know where it's starting or ending and this is what we got. So if you're interested I'd love it if you'd stick around and make sure you check out all the links below when you're done. See you in a minute. Okay guys, let's get started. As per usual, I'm using my favorite Delusions Journal by Ranger and I've already gessoed my page and made sure that I'm not working upside down and we're ready to go. There's some masking tape under there and our first prompt is to use bits of graph paper or composition paper. I've decided to use both. I have a pad of some graph paper and I also have a few of these composition notebooks. So I've ripped some paper out and we're just going to use my favorite handy dandy Decor Americana Decoupage. I wish this stuff was sold by the gallon. I go through it that much and I have some in my palette dish here with an old brush and I'm just going to rip up the paper and apply it to our page. Now, I always say I'm not going to cover the page completely, but who knows what's going to happen. I never put any planning into these pages. I just let them kind of become what they're going to become. So I'll show you quickly how I'm going to do this and then I'll finish up off camera. Okay, there's some composition paper, which I've honestly never used in an art journal page before, so that's fun. And then I'll throw some graph paper up here. I forgot to put down my wax paper underneath. Uh, I'll do that in a second, just so my pages don't stick together. Okay. So I'm just going to go around the page and try to leave some white underneath peeking through. I'll see you back here when that's done. All right, well, that was pretty straightforward. Nothing too exciting yet, but I figured before it dries completely, I'm looking at the second prompt here, which is to add jelly paper or stamped book pages. Um, I personally don't own a jelly plate yet, but I do have the honor of owning some gorgeous jelly prints that I've gotten in Happy Mail. So here's an example of one of those. And I decided rather than do jelly paper or stamped book page, just like the first prompt, let's do both. So I took some book page that I also got in Happy Mail and I just stamped it myself. I used uh, my Stazon ink pad and these four little stamps. I'll put links to everything I use uh, in the description box below, but pretty self-explanatory. I just stamped those. So same thing with our decoupage. While I still have it out, I'm just going to, just like we did, add these bits and pieces, okay? Um, probably going to fill up whatever white space we had left, and that's fine. I think this is going to be really cool looking. So we'll do that. And then same thing with the jelly paper. Uh, let's see. We'll go up here. All right. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. Okay, let me finish this up and we will let it dry and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we're looking like. Okay, what do you think? Everything's fairly dry now. I think it looks pretty cool actually. 
I always hate to cover up the next layer, you know, but you got to go for it. That's the whole purpose of these challenges, for me anyway. All right, our next prompt is to use one of the suggested paint colors. Now, the suggested paint colors are teal, lavender, and gray. So I just happen to have, this is an apple barrel teal, and this actually is watered down. This is an old one. Um, I have a Martha Stewart, some kind of gray, uh, lake fog, but that looks like gray to me. What do you think? And then this one also apple barrel. This is lilac mist, and I'm a huge purple freak. But lilac is probably my least favorite of the purples. I like the more vibrant, darker ones. But anyway, uh, I must be feeling like a rebel today because instead of using just one of the suggested paint colors, I figured, what the heck, let's use all of them. So I have an old pair of latex gloves I'm going to put on here. And I figured I would do three different things. Now I already have these in palette dishes, etc. I have some really big bubble wrap that I received in some packaging, and I'm going to use the gray with that one. It's time for a new palette dish, but I'm just going to kind of, I don't want it too painty, but let's just go for it. I don't know. Eh. Oh, that's actually like a, looks like a light brown to me. Oh well, it is what it is. I'm using all the paint on the palette dish. Let's just go for it. I'm going randomly around. And then, how about we do some teal? Alright, so I've used all that up. Let's do the teal. And this is about to get messy here. Let's see, maybe I can... I have this little vinyl placemat. Um, and I do have some wax paper here, so let's just go for it. Um, you know what? I'm going to spray my... I have some water. Lightly spritz my page so this will run better. Uh, and I'm just going to drip this down. And like I said, it's already been watered down, so it's fairly drippy. Um, let's just go for it. I'm just... Oh, I thought it would run better than that, but... Put some more water at the top here. And maybe I'll just kind of... Play with that a little. Okay. And then, while well, that's working itself out, that actually looks pretty cool. What do you think? Um, the lilac, I figured we're going to water that down too. And I have a toothbrush here. And I thought I would just do some spattering. Why not? Right? Oh, that looks really cool. I think. What do you guys think? I don't want to do too much. Let's say one more and that's enough. I never listen to myself. Don't listen to yourself. There you go. I think that looks really cool. What do you guys think? Nice. All right. Well, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to, like, move it around or anything. I'm just going to let it dry like that. It's probably going to take a while because the page is so wet. But we'll let that dry. And then our next prompt after that is to use bits of twine, ribbon, lace, or yarn. So while that's drying, I'll pull out my stash of fiber and see what we have for that, okay? See you back here. Okay, guys, this took a long time to dry, but it is finally dry now. And I think it looks really cool, actually. 
lots of texture and dimension there. So let's cover it up. <laughs> Our next prompt is to use bits of twine, ribbon, lace, or yarn. I took a look through my stash and I've decided that I'm going to kind of combine the twine ribbon part and I had some burlap and I've cut some strips and I'm going to just kind of not do a full-on border but lay them around the page um, you know kind of like this and to put them down and I'm really not sure how this is going to work but I think it'll be fine. I'm going to use my Aliens Tacky Glue and just adhere them kind of randomly all over the page. What do you think? That'll look cool, right? I hope. I don't know. Who knows what we're going to have to glue on top of it. But just take it one step at a time. So that's what I'm going to do next, and I'll see you back here when that's all done. Okay, guys. I'm loving this right now. I really love burlap, and it just goes well with anything you put it with. So another example of doing things that I never would have done if not for this challenge or challenges like this. So I really enjoy it. Um, that being said, the next prompt is to add at least three focal images. Anyone who knows me well knows that this is the part where I usually struggle the most. Um, I have a hard enough time coming up with one focal image, never mind three. I hate to be boring or redundant and fall back on the same thing all the time, but I've decided to use some butterflies. And these are actually cut from packaging that I had. I believe this was a calendar. Um, and so there are edges that are cut off a little bit. But what I thought was... I could glue this, pull this up a little, um, and use these edges, just incorporate them right on the existing edge of the page, maybe. What do you think? Uh, I went back and forth. I was going to draw something, and then I thought, oh, I could use pictures of my grandchildren. But going through my stash, um, this is what I've decided on. So once again, I'm going to use my Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. I'm going to glue these down really well, and I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then I will see you guys in the morning. And the next prompt is going to be interesting. It's to make marks with a household item or items. So we'll see where that's going to take us. All right. I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. Everything's nice and dry. What do you think? I kind of like it. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. And I was going to outline it like with a black Stabilo pencil. I need to invest in some softer colors like grays or browns. Um, I didn't want to go that harsh. So I pulled out, I have these, um, what are they? Woodless graphite pencils. I love them. So I just colored around the butterflies with these and then just smudged it out with my finger. So I really like how that gives it kind of a soft shadow. Makes them pop, but not, you know, too obvious. So that's that. And it looks like our next prompt is to make marks with household items. Um, I actually gave this a little bit of thought this morning and the first thing I came up with was um, this piece of a pot holder. It's a silicone pot holder with a honeycomb pattern. And just like with the pencils, I need to invest in some lighter inks. Um, so I originally was going to use my black stays on, but I want to go a little more subtle. So I pulled out this. I've had this for years, you guys. I think it's a Walmart brand. I don't believe it's um, color fast. I think it's water soluble, but I don't really care. So I'm just going to use this on our little pot holder piece here and lay down some pattern on top of all our texture and pattern in the background. So let's see. 
Oh yeah, can you see that? Yes, you can. I like how that looks. I'm glad I decided on the blue and not the black. So I'm not going to cover every, you know, bare space here, but I am going to, you know, pretty much cover every bare space. <laughs> so I'm going to use that. And then for my second, because it did say household items, and I know I'm breaking the rules on this challenge, but I am following this rule. Um, I thought I would use a straw for the circle at the bottom rather than use like a, a lid or a, you know, paper towel tube. And I did find some actual gray paint, which is one of the color prompts here. Um, and I'm just going to dip my straw in my paint, kind of knock off some on the end, and then randomly, because that's my favorite word, just kind of, yeah, I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but this will also add some color and dimension. So I'm going to do the stamping first, which I just realized, uh, so I don't have to stamp over wet paint. And then I'll put in some of these circles, and we'll be back with another prompt after that. And we're getting near the end. Okay, everything's nice and dry. I think it looks really cool. And like I said, we're almost done. We have two prompts left. So the next prompt is to add a word for the month. And the words that were suggested are flower, accomplish, climb, reach, hike, or success. I'm not a wordy girl. I feel like I've been whining through this whole challenge. I'm breaking the rules and I'm whining. Uh, left to my own devices, any piece of my artwork most likely would not contain a phrase or wording or things like that. But I'm following the challenge today. So I'm going to kind of play by the rules. I've decided to rip up some dictionary page. And here's just like a little piece. Um, I have a big old dictionary that I had gotten at the auction and I use it in my mixed media. And I've taken it and I've ripped out two words. One is butterfly and the other is flower, which was the suggested word. And all I did to kind of age the paper, I used my Tim Holtz Distress Stain Vintage Photo. Love this stuff. And I'm going to try to make this kind of inconspicuous. I don't really care if anyone's going to be able to read it. So I'm just going to lay these on the burlap like that. What do you think? I don't know. I'm not in love with it, but I'm going to go with it. So I'll use my Aliens Clear Tacky Glue, or should it go here? See, I start to overthink, and I'm like, oh, maybe should I have another one? Um, I'm just going to kind of, I'll work it out. So let's glue those down, and then we'll have our last prompt, which is going to be add cardboard or scrapbooking paper strips. Interesting. Uh, yeah, we're working it out. Okay. Okay, here's where we're at. You know I had to go ahead and lay down a third word, right? So we have butterfly, flower, and then butter fingers and butter dish. <laughs> Last prompt. Add cardboard or scrapbooking paper strips. I went in my stash. I love cardboard and I love the look of raw cardboard. But what popped up at me were these scraps of cardboard that I had made mixed media postcards out of. And, you know, they're just from probably an Amazon box or something. So there are ridged cardboard pieces on them, etc. I really like this with the gold and these colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut strips just with my scissors randomly and kind of create a little bit of a border. I'm not going to just do, you know, an inch around all the way. I'm going to kind of try to break it up a little. I say that now. We'll see what it winds up being. But that's what I've decided to do. So I'm going to incorporate some of these. And the glue of the day. All right. So I'll get those down. I'll come back and show you. And then that's going to be it for this month's Mission Inspiration. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay guys, here you have it. 
I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Um, it's always iffy. You never know. I just close my eyes and take a plunge. But, yeah, I really like it. What do you think? Do you like the way I did the border that way? Do you like these kind of challenges? Do you think they enhance your creativity or do you think they impede creativity? I know for me they definitely take me out of my comfort zone and you know I do things that I wish I can remember for the next time but I never usually do. It's always a lot of fun. I'll put all the links to Mike Deacon's group below, the Facebook group, as well as his channel. Check him out. You'll have a blast. Tell them Callie sent you. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I will talk to you guys very soon. I'll insert some pics. And, oh, I meant to tell you, I did go around the outside edge with my Faber-Castell pit pen. Uh, this is a brush pen. These are India ink. It's permanent. And I just kind of um, used my water brush to dilute that a little bit. So just to kind of tie the border together and I believe that I'm going to give this a coat of some sealant and this is Americana uh, acrylic sealer in this is matte. I also have gloss but I'm going to keep it matte for this project. So if you use this make sure you're in a well ventilated area. So yeah I'll see you guys next month with another mission inspiration. Take care.